Nobody takes down Angus Snuff Love 7 easy. There's a reason why, after 100 channels destroyed, Angus Snuff Love 7 is still here. There's a reason why nobody want to get in a beat with Angus Snuff Love 7. You don't take me seriously. And now your ass is barbecue.
the way of life. We are in a state of emergency. Ready, ready. Want to about it? Like the here? Here it go. Bring your mind. Everybody who is black and interested in black people, let us sit down and find out how we can get together in one direction against one enemy and accomplish this job overnight. When soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rush has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cook was asking for. A change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Evermont is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios. We approve of this message. The Mississippi campaign represents everything that you claim that you want. The beginning of a all black independent nation. The ability to control your own resources. Your politics. The law. Be able to do your own thing for a change. Creating an economy. Create and produce good that Africa or anybody on the planet would want. You're fake. You don't want to do nothing. Three hours talking about the Mississippi campaign.
that I'm a person looking to uh, get down with this Mississippi campaign. How, how does one get started with this? Sir? <laughs> Mr. Angel Snuffler. What was the question again? I didn't know. Let's get this party started quickly. 
Let's get this party started. Ride, ride, ride. Let's get this party started. Ride, ride, ride. Let's get this party started quickly. Let's get this party started quickly. Let's get this party started. Ride, ride, ride. Let's get this party started. Ride, ride, ride. Let's get this party started quickly. Afternoon, afternoon. Welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the mighty one, known here, the most powerful voice on YouTube. I am the mighty one, Angel Snub Nub said. <clears throat> All righty then. Are we ready to have a talk? Not a debate, not a discussion. We're going to have a talk. That's what we're going to have. Just a simple talk. No right or wrong. We're just talking. We're talking. Using our brain. Our mouth to communicate with one another. We're just talking. No need to get upset. No need to get emotional. We're just talking. I did not have the intent to go live today 
the topic, I was just going to make a few 15 minute videos and call it a day. But, but what made me want to go live <clears throat> is because I was told by somebody on Facebook who believes in aliens. They told me all human beings on this planet are not actually human. Some of us are aliens. And I agree, except my position I take is we are alien to reality. That's what we're alien to. Because we have been indoctrinated with fantasy and fairy tales and delusions in this human condition for generations since recorded time we have been spookified spiritualized religiousified all those words for generations all over the world. I don't know how they done it. Well, actually, in a way I do. Remember, ancient people were illiterate. Ancient people were ignorant of their environment. Ancient people did not understand how the universe, the earth, plants and animals, they didn't know how all this worked. Ancient people were amazed by everything in nature. They made gods out of dogs. They made gods out of cats and crocodiles and earthquakes and volcanoes. Ancient people were illiterate. They were ignorant. This is not to say that some did not try to find real understanding by studying the earth, studying nature, studying what they could of the universe. But the majority of the people fell victim to spookism, spirituality, and religious fantasy and fairy tales. This has been going on for centuries all over the world, no matter what your, what your race is you would find spookism all over the earth. So you and I, we should not be shocked that the realities tip on earth is having a very difficult time trying to swim up the river because we are swimming up against a river that's against reality that's counter reality for generations. So here we are, little minnows in an ocean of salt water trying to swim up the river to get back to reality where we actually begun before humanity was told these lies. Like the salmon, swim up the river back to our birthplace of fresh, fresh water. Religion and spirituality, these fairy tales, and they represent salt water. And we've been living in the salt water for a long time. But if you want to reproduce, if you want to be strong and healthy as a salmon, you got to go from the salt water and swim back to the fresh water got to get the salt out your system and get back fresh and that's that's what represents us is the salmon this fish called a salmon and the original sign of the christian church to my knowledge was the fish and the jesus of the scriptures took a fish and a few loaves of bread and fed the multitudes 
And if you understand and swim with us, we who are the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry, we can take this bread and this fish and we can feed the multitudes. We are the symbol of this Jesus Christ. That's who we are. In a real sense, not make believe, not fiction, not fantasy, in the real sense. <clears throat> so it was not my intent to go live, but someone in my Facebook told me and gave me a definite time. That's why I want to go live because they informed me that a great spiritual event is going to happen at 1530, 3.30. I don't know whether that's Eastern time, Central time, Hong Kong time. I don't know what time. They told me 3.30 p.m., a great spiritual event is going to happen. And they told me, don't be scared. And when it happened, don't be scared. When it happened, simply repent for talking all this reality's temple stuff and you be all right. <laughs> So are y'all ready? Deacons, are y'all ready? Are you ready to repent? <laughs> Everybody listen to this ministry. Well, I, I look, I, uh oh, somebody getting scared. Look, look, I just listen to you, guy. I just listen to you. I don't believe that stuff that you're saying. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not part of that. Okay. Just, Hey, I'm not part of that. <laughs> are we all ready to repent? He told me, don't be stirred. So my reply to him was, that's fine and dandy, but I will stand on mine. I'm not going to repent a damn thing. If somebody needs to repent, it's this being, this God or this creator, you the one telling lies for thousands of years and you have failed the people. You have not done what you claim. You're not a good being. You're tyrannical. You're judgmental. You're arrogant. I'm not going to submit to you. I'm not going to repent by rebelling against wickedness, injustice, and evil. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stand on mine. So bring your great spiritual event and I just suffer the consequences your God your alien does not scare me at all bring it what can you do to us I'll kill you we're gonna die anyway I'm going to punish you with whatever, do what you got to do. You piece of alien God trash, whatever you are, do what you got to do. So when this great spiritual event happens, it's 244 here, central time. It's 344 Eastern time. I figure I would be live long enough so we can experience this spiritual event while I'm actually live. He did not say what is going to happen. Just a great spiritual event at 3.30 p.m. Wanted me to inbox him for more details. 
Why do I have to inbox you for more details? I'll just wait and see for myself at 3.30. That's what we're doing here. That's why I went live. So Twin Pyramid, Soul Brother 85, Mello, Sister Ann, Phil Fox, Denzel, Talib, all of us here. We can experience the great spiritual event live. So while I'm talking and bringing us this topic, anything could happen. <laughs> anything could happen. <laughs> We're just talking. We're talking and waiting on the great spiritual event. It's, it's 3.45 Eastern time. And in about 45 minutes, it will be 3.30 Central Time. I'm looking forward to the great spiritual event because that would make us wrong. And if that makes us wrong and it's real, what can I say? Like, wow, they was right. I can admit, we can admit, wow, we was we was wrong. I can admit I'm, I was in error. I'm not going to repent because I don't know what the hell. Uh, <laughs> that's that's real mean, uh, brother. <laughs> brother is back. That, that, that's, that's sort of mean. <clears throat> but uh, I can confess, I can admit, hey, I, I, I was wrong. No doubt you've proven me wrong. I can I can admit that. But I'm not going to repent for a damn thing. I have the right not to believe. I have the right to question. I have the right to know instead of believing. <laughs> the basketball game is, is the uh are they in the playoffs? Is this the it is this the uh is this the finals? I don't keep it with basketball like that no more, so I, I couldn't tell you. I see the news clips now and then on the news. I don't I don't know. If LeBron James is not playing, I really don't really don't even watch basketball no more. I so I assume that LeBron James and and the, and the boys got got eliminated out of the finals. <clears throat> it's the playoffs. Okay, so. I figure I'm going to go live and when this great spiritual event happened and while I'm talking, some of you, you can keep an eye on the news, the internet or whatever for something out of the ordinary, something spectacular. It should be happening very, very soon while we speak here. <clears throat> I want to say that the brother that told me this, he believes in aliens. He believes in, in spookism, spirituality, spookism, and aliens. We all have the right to do that. I am not angry at him. I'm not angry at nobody. I don't care what you believe. You can believe that. I'm not we're not here to convert you to anything. I'm just here to state an observation and a conclusion. And if you accept it, that's cool. If you don't, I, I don't care. I'm not going to get angry with you. That's your business. There's no law where it says you can't believe. There's no law that says you can't be stupid. There's an old song say, everybody plays the fool sometimes. There's no law, I mean, there's no law against being a fool. There's no law against being stupid. You have the right to do that. For you, for you. I have a problem, 
Now, my big problem is when you try to force your belief and your stupidity on other people, especially children, that's why I have a problem. Leave children alone. Leave the babies alone. But these people are so desperate for believers and followers. See, that's, that's a predator. That's a predator mindset. When lions and coyotes and hyenas, when they go after prey, the number one choice the number one choices is babies, the sick, and the elderly. That's the predator mentality. Right here in the United States, the number one, the number one people targeted for predation is, of course, women, children, and the elderly. Easy prey. They have religion and spiritual people have a predator mindset. You want to get the children because they can't think yet. They're little babies and it's easy to brainwash a child because they don't know. A child depends on their elders to guide them in the right manner. And you taking them to hell in a basket with your damn lies. You tell them about Santa Claus. How many of you grew up believing Santa Claus and your feelings was hurt when you found out Santa Claus was not real? Raise your hand. I didn't care. I didn't trip off it because I was influenced by the teachings of Elijah Muhammad and they didn't, they don't teach that. But I know there's a lot of children who believe in Santa Claus and when they found out that Santa Claus was a lie, it hurt them because mommy and daddy not supposed to lie to me. Adults are not supposed to lie to the children. Back in the day, not too long ago, there was a dinosaur called Barney. Is it Barney? Barney the purple dinosaur. I think that's what it was called. You remember that? Barney the, the purple dinosaur. My nieces, my nieces and nephew love Barney. And we told them, well, you know, Barney is, is, is not real. Now we told them Barney was not real. They didn't want to believe me. But see, we told them the truth. We told them that Barney was a man in a suit that played a dinosaur on TV. Ah, Barney is real. Barney is real. Okay, but they cannot say that we told them a lie. Yeah, Barney and friends. You can go on, uh, you can get an app, you can go on, on cable and you can find Barney and friends show. Barney, Barney the, the purple dinosaur. So what happened was, Barney came to town live. And the children were so excited. Oh, we want to go see Barney. We want to go see Barney live. The purple dinosaur. So we took the children to see Barney, the purple dinosaur. They were so excited. Going to see Barney. Going to see Barney. What was that song? I forgot the little song that Barney used to sing. I got a friend in you. I got a friend. Something, something about a friend. I don't know. That was a, one of Barney's uh, songs that he used to sing. So we took the children to see Barney and I don't know exactly how it happened, but they found out that Barney was a man in a suit. Oh yeah, you love me, I love you, something like that. <laughs> That's that Barney song. I love you, you love me, something. They found out that Barney was not real. It hurt them to their core.
that hurt those children so, so, so bad. But we, as adults, we told them that Barney was not real. Barney was a fictional character. It was a man in a suit. I, I can remember that day when they found out that Barney was not real. That, that really hurt those children. So here you are. How do you think these adults feel? This is the reason why I cannot get angry. I cannot get upset. I'm disappointed and I'm frustrated with adults. But they believe in Jesus and Allah and the creator, the most high, Yashara, Yashewe, whatever. They believe in all these things the same way my grand relatives believe in Barney the Dinosaur. Here we are on the Realities Temple telling them that Barney is not real. Santa Claus is not real. They don't want to hear that. But whether they like it or not, sooner or later, the truth, the real truth is going to be revealed. And they cannot say that the Realities Temple on Earth ministry, Twin Pyramid, the Deacon, Z-Man, all of us here, Mellow Cap, they cannot say that we did not tell you that all those things is not real. I'm confident. I'm waiting on the spiritual event to prove us lie. I'm waiting on it. I know my deacons is watching the internet. I know people you're watching the internet, you're watching the news at 3.30. A great spiritual event is supposed to happen to the point where the person told us, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Just repent and everything will be all right. That sort of sounds like a threat too. That sounds like a, th a veiled threat. If we don't repent, I guess this, this being or this God or whatever going to kill all of us. So be it. I'll be the first in line because I'm not going to bow down to your punk ass. It's not going to happen. You don't impress me, you spiritual bastard. Oh, <laughs> can I do that on a Sunday? <laughs> you should be sh shamed to force your beliefs on children. That's when I have a problem. If it's good for you, that's cool. Leave the children alone. They told me these lies because I was a child. That's why you got me. Because I was a child. Because ain't nothing coming with me as an adult. Your days is over. It's reality or nothing at all. Sick of your lies. There ain't no damn God. Ain't no most high, no creator. And I'm telling you right now, ain't no spiritual event gonna happen. I'm very confident in that. Nothing going to happen. But I can say we could be wrong. So we're going to wait. In a half an hour, central time, it's already 3.30, past 3.30, eastern time. In another half an hour, it's going to be 3.30, central time. Or maybe 3.30, Pacific time. The person did not say. So let us just say today, before midnight, today before midnight, a spiritual event is going to happen. I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen while we're alive. Because I'm confident to declare it's a damn lie. 
these spiritual religious folks, y'all bastards, you're nothing but a bunch of liars. You target children for your bull doo doo, you're a bunch of parasites. And those people who sell this to the masses, they they're not they're not waiting on a spiritual event. They live in, they driving Mercedes Benzes and Escalades, living the high life in this life. They living rich and you waiting on an alien, a spook to come out the sky to do something. And the people that selling you this, they living high on the hall in this life, not in the spiritual realm, in this life. Taking your money. Now my family, my mother and father, my grandfather, the adults that was around me, they look, they believed in a God. They believed in the creator. But my mother, my grandmother, the adults that was around me, they never forced their religion on us children. They allowed us to be children. We went to church because they went to church and we wanted to be with the adult. We went to church. They did not bring us home and, talk and, and teach us about Jesus Christ gonna do this and Jesus Christ is gonna do that. They allow us as we grew up and matured they allowed us to do that. The reason why I got caught up in Islam was because I was sold that religion by outsiders. They were relatives, but they came from the outside. My close family, they did not try to sell religion and beliefs on us, on us children. But that's what I told you. A lot of these religious believers they are so desperate for followers. They attack children, little children. I was a little, I was a little boy. And my people telling me about Elijah Muhammad and Islam and all this Arabic nonsense. I'm a little boy. I also was a little Michael Evans. I was a little black power kind of little fella. And so I was attracted to those teachings because of that, not necessarily because of the religion, but because they were supposed to represent freedom, justice, and equality for the black man and woman in America. <laughs> Brothers Baxter, I did not win the Powerball, so I don't know what else could happen since that did not happen. <laughs> hey, brother, brother Back, if you do win the Powerball, I hope you... I hope you share a little bit with your with your people here at the realities too. I'm hey, I'm going to admit I've been trying to play a little of the Powerball myself, but I'm going to tell you, people like us, it's difficult for us to win money like that. Somebody that's that's going to go to Disneyland and do stupid stuff, they'll win millions and millions of dollars. Me personally, all my Powerball money goes to make reality operation exodus mississippi campaign we're going to take control of a state that's what we're going to do and it's going to get done don't need your damn help and the people are going to respond the only reason why they're not responding because they don't know they're going to know they're going to know the benefits and we're going to take that state and then we're going to go to the next state and we're going to make this a reality but people like me, people like the brothers back, the probability of us being able to obtain millions of dollars so that we could do something like that, the probability is very, very low that we could win those type of funds. Because you're damn sure not going to get money like that voluntarily. Louis Farrakhan and all these preachers get millions and millions of dollars every year and don't give y'all ass nothing. You don't get nothing back from the church and these preachers and these, these pimp preachers, including Farrakhan and all these other Joel Osteen and TDJ. 
Joyce Myers bragging about their private planes and fancy cars and big houses. If there's a if there's a spectacular spiritual event, then that God, that being, that alien needs to put an end to all that. If there is a spectacular spiritual event, why would this alien, why would this God want to hurt the realities tip on earth when this God knows that's all we want? We want nothing but good for humanity. I did not say just good for black people, even though soul brothers and sisters is our priority. We want good for humanity. Because when it's all said and done, we all interconnected, ain't nobody going nowhere. We all have to share and, and work and live in this planet together. Unless you have the mind of Adolf Hitler or somebody, I'm gonna kill everybody off. Easier said than done. We need to stop thinking like racists. Okay, so we're live waiting on the this great spiritual event. That's that's why we're live. But in the meantime, this is a Sunday, and we're gonna talk a little bit of we want to talk about and make some points about religion and spirituality or whatever, and get out of here. So right now I, I have not received any reports. In the chat room. Oh, how can I, I keep forgetting my Facebook people? Shout out to Facebook. I always forget my Facebook family. They watch the videos too. Hey Terry. Not Terry Ellis. <laughs> hey Terry. Let me let me like Terry comment on Facebook. Hey Terry. Terry's in the house. Facebook. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I don't know whether Terry is a male or female, but Terry says they give us illusions. Thank you, Terry, for joining us uh, this afternoon. We are waiting on. We are waiting on the great spiritual event. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you this. And I'm very sure. A lot of these people who try to force their religion on you and they, they have to talk about Jesus every day and the creator every day and the most high and their spiritual, they got to talk about this every day. The reason why they have to do that, absolutely. Our YouTube is sending the, the, the greetings to our Facebook our Facebook family. Hello, Facebook. What a lot of people seem to forget is I came from the same place that you did. I believe in Jesus. I believe in spirits and, and spooks. I believe in Allah, the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. I come from the same place. I was black power, black power family. I was all that also at one time. You're not saying nothing that I don't know anything about. I know about what you're talking about. The difference between you and me, I believe in Jesus. I didn't run around Jesus, Jesus every day, every few minutes. I believe in the teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. I did not run around, oh, Elijah Muhammad said this, Elijah Muhammad, uh, all praises you to, I didn't do that 24 hours a day. And I damn sure didn't try to force that. I did not force Jesus or Allah on nobody. I could hold a, a, a conversation with you and don't have to say nothing about Jesus or nothing about Elijah Muhammad. But you have these people, they cannot talk to you without mentioning Jesus or Allah or the most high and the creator. Oh, the creator is every few, every few words. It's because they really don't believe themselves. They trying to convince you. 
They try to sell you this belief. They don't really believe themselves. So they have to constantly talk about Jesus, the creator, the most high, Yahshua, Yahshua, whatever the, the God is, Allah. They have to keep talking about it because they don't believe it deep down inside themselves. You think they're trying to sell you the belief. In reality, they're trying to sell it to themselves. They don't really believe. And when you look at their actions and their behaviors, you can tell they really don't believe. They really don't believe the stuff themselves. It's just something they were sold. And they don't want to look stupid and admit that something is wrong. That's what it's all about. So I'm going to do everything I can to force you to believe so I don't feel stupid myself. That's what it's all about. That's why they get so angry at us when we reject that stuff. And when we explain why we reject it, they get really, really angry and upset. They get upset. They start calling you names, make market of you. And some of them will even threaten your life. And some of them, them, <laughs> some of them will murder. That's a proven fact. This religion, spirituality stuff makes people go insane. I saw a brother on Facebook on a video. They was taking him to jail. And one of the news reporters said, hey, why did you do what you did there, guy? Why did you, why did you, why did you steal? Why did you shoot at? He said, God made me do it. He was like, what? He said, yo, God made me do it. He said, God made him do good things. He said, God made him do bad things. He said, God is the reason why he got away with so much stuff because God had his back. But then when he took it too far, God punished him and made him get caught. <laughs> he said, God made him. He didn't say the devil made me do it. He said, God made him do good and bad. <laughs> wow. And of course, a lot of folks would not agree. How, how, can, how you know you don't have a relationship? You don't know that man. How you know God didn't tell him to do it? How do you know? Now you don't you don't believe that man and you reject what he's saying, but you saying some outrageous stuff too. But everybody's supposed to believe what you say. See, it don't make any sense. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. If that man said that God, that's his belief, that God said he do, that God make him do good and bad things, who are you to say that God didn't do it? You don't know if God talked to him or not. See, I know, see, for us, we know damn well God ain't told him a damn thing because God don't exist. That's our position. But you said God exists. How do you know? Well, I, I, God, how, you don't know what God, you don't know. You don't know what God is saying to that man. I want to make two points and we're going to get out of here <clears throat> while we wait on the, this great, spiritual event. I didn't get a whole lot of details. I tried to get more details, but they didn't want to give nothing up. So I guess we're just going to have to wait. But they did tell me at 3.30 it was supposed to happen. So in 15 minutes, my time, it would be 3.30. It's already past 3.30. Eastern time. And I think about in two hours, it would be 3.30 California time. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to see. So far I have been talking and I have been on the air. We've been on the air for at least a half hour right now. Almost an hour actually, like 50 minutes or something. And uh, so far, no reports of Nothing out of the ordinary, spiritual, spiritual event. So before I continue, I want to also, I want to send a shout out again to my Facebook 
Facebook friend. Oh, Terry is a brother. Thank you, Terry. Terry on Facebook is a brother. <clears throat> he says, I hated going to church, but every Sunday at 10 30, <laughs> I pretended to be sick so I could leave church and look at wrestling with my granny. Granny didn't even go to church. Granny wanted to stay home on Sunday and watch the watch the uh the wrestling match. <laughs> I know that's what my grandma did. Back in the day, wrestling was a big thing in, in soul brothers and sisters, black people's household. Black folks love some wrestling. So I, I can relate to uh brother Terry. Thank you, uh, brother Terry, for joining us this afternoon. Uh we're still waiting. <laughs> we're still waiting on the uh on the great, this uh, great spiritual event. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make these points, and maybe it might happen while we're still talking, while we're still on the live stream. Because I would like for it to happen while I'm talking live. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> yeah, oh, wrestle at the chase. Exactly. That was very popular back in the day. Right, wrestling at the chase. Very popular program. I did not like wrestling a whole lot, but I used to watch wrestling at the chase when I was a, a young man, younger person. <clears throat> Thank you, Terry, for that. So let me make these points. And uh, hey, what's so sad here is people don't want nobody to listen to Angel Stuff Number Seven. Here I am, I'm talking to talking to Facebook and I'm on YouTube at the same time. And uh, they don't like that. It's already bad enough. I talk to people on YouTube. YouTube terminated 100 of my channel. But I also got family, I have people on Facebook that listen to me. Whether you like it or not, everybody, everybody is not caught up into that religion and spirituality stuff. People can accept life for what it is. I just want freedom, justice, and equality. Leave me the hell alone. I just want to live life comfortable. I'm tired of being discriminated against, racial profiling, housing discrimination. I don't have the right to go get a drink of water. Somebody gonna tell me that's my river. That's my pond. We should be sick of all this garbage in this world and clearly religion and spirituality ain't doing a damn i want the great i am hoping and i want the great spiritual event to happen maybe this god or this whatever it is is going to make things right so we welcome we welcome the great spiritual event however at the same time this god this alien, this being, from what I hear described, this being is tyrannical. This being will probably be worse than the white man, worse than Adolf Hitler, Stalin. This alien, this God uh, being would treat us way worse than how we've been treated the last few centuries in the human family. I wonder if, even though we suffer all this racism and we got all this racial hatred going on and uh, misogyny and we got all this stuff, I wonder if it really came down to it. If there were aliens or some kind of strange people that came out the earth and they wanted to take over humanity and make us slaves because they don't give a damn about us. Would all humanity, black, white, Chinese, whatever, would all humanity unite against these forces that want to kill all of us? Or are we so divided and filled with hatred in the human family, these aliens that come from the sky or these aliens that come out the ground that want to make us slaves, are we so messed up they could come and just take us over and all of us, Russians, Ukrainians, Asians, 
Libyans, wherever you are in the world, you become a slave to these aliens. Or will we be like Independence Day? Come together as humanity, uh, we gotta get down. I don't care what your religion is, I don't care what your race is or your gender, transgender, I don't give a damn. We got some folks here that wanna make all of us human slaves. So I would like, I, I actually would like for this being to come and try to do something because this being, this God, this creator does not sound like a loving, peaceful, fair person or being. We as human beings gonna have to unite, get down and kick this God, alien, whatever it is in the ass. We will not be your slaves. Still waiting on the spiritual event. I want to make these two points and we're going to get out of here. One point I want to make, and I laugh, in the spiritual world, people who believe in spirituality, they tell me that death is an illusion. Death is not real. Now, if you agree with them, I would just like to know anybody on Facebook, Put a one in the comment section. Anybody that believe that death is an illusion, that death is not real, uh, put a one in there because I, I would like to just know that I, I would like to talk to you for a minute. I want to talk to you. Death is not real. I lost my mother two years ago. She died. I have not seen her again. My grandmother died in 1989. My One of my uncles died in 1990. My pastor died in 1987. One of my aunties died in 1970-something, uh, 78 um, or something like that. I have not seen none of them. But death is an illusion. When was the last time any of you saw any of your relatives that you know. I'm not talking about no ancestors. People keep talking about the power of the ancestors. The ancestors have no power. They're dead. The dead has no power. That's what makes them dead. When your car goes dead, it has no power. When your computer goes dead, it has no power. Your ancestors are dead. They have no power. And the sad thing is we have living ancestors and we treat them like garbage. We treat them like trash. We have living ancestors in prison right now. You don't write them a letter. You don't go visit your ancestors in prison. You have ancestors in nursing homes. You don't visit you don't go mess with them. And they don't, and you damn sure don't depend on them for your scholarship and your great wisdom. All this garbage that y'all brag about. You keep talking about some dead people. Them dead people, your ancestors that these folks talk about, you ain't never even met them. The ancestors. That's a general term. That's a relative term. Who the hell are you talking about? Name some names. Just like they keep talking about, we are African. What African are you? Name some family names. Name some tribes, nations. Who is claiming you? These people not even claiming you. And you proud of that. Well, I'm an African. An African what? Are you Somali? Or, 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 or Ghanaian, or what the hell are you? What is your family name in Africa? When do you go visit them? You don't go visit no damn body. People in China come here from China, they actually have family. A lot of them actually have family in China. They come from Afghanistan, they have family in Afghanistan. They come from Brazil, they have family. Your ass keep talking about, I'm an African. Who do you have in Africa? Most of you don't even have a friend. Most of you don't even know a person that come from Africa. 
The whole thing sounds stupid to me. I can't do it no more. Bogus. That's just as bad as this spiritual stuff. Bogus ass. It's bogus and stupid. We don't have any relatives in Africa. The original breeding stock had relatives in Africa or the islands or whoever. Now there are recent immigrants, recent, recent immigrants. They have family in Jamaica, Barbados, and Africa. You don't. Your family been here for 400 years. You don't have no relatives, no damn where. And then the relatives you do have, you don't even like them. You don't even like them. You don't get along with your mama, your cousin, your daddy, your brothers and sisters, your biological people that you know right here in the United States. You don't even give a, get along with them. And you don't tell me about some African ass people that you never met in your whole entire life. Angel Snuff Nup 7 is more related to you than any African on the continent. And you hate my guts because I don't want to do black power. I don't believe in God. And black people are spiritual. That's what's wrong with your ass. You're spiritual. Waiting on ghosts and goblins to, to save you. Religion and spirituality is slavery. Wherever you find it, the people waiting on some spook, some spirit to come do something for them. Some some uh, great spiritual event. That's what we're waiting on right now. Over an hour. We've been talking for over an hour waiting for the uh, great spiritual event. And the person told me, don't be stirred. Don't be scared. Just repent. Don't be scared. <laughs> So death is an illusion. If death is an illusion, why don't you say that when somebody busts your ass with a bullet, when, when bombs are dropping on you? If death is an illusion, look, if death is an illusion, then you have no fear because you ain't going to die. Don't lock your car. Don't lock your house. Don't own a gun. Don't own a knife. Because you can't die anyway. You just, one thing you're going to do is transform into conscious energy or into a spirit and take your happy ass to the spiritual realm or wherever the hell you're supposed to go. Because you're not going to die. But one thing for sure. Once they declare you dead, once they cut your brain out your out your skull, and that that mortician take that knife and take all your organs out your body, we're never gonna see you again. We're not. We're never gonna see your spiritual happy ass again. You can go to the alien world or the spiritual world or whatever, but you're not gonna be here no more. The, the amazing thing here, too, to me is these people talk all this spirituality and they tell me about when you die, your, your spirit go to all these, these, these different realms, uh, realm eight, realm nine, uh, seven, whatever, these, these, these spiritual realms. And if you notice when they describe these places, sound just like the earth. And the reason why it sounds like the earth it because that's all you know. You ain't been to no damn spiritual realm. But how are you going to tell me about spirituality and you go to all these different realms and you don't you can't explain to me how glass is made? How is glass made? How does this computer work? What causes a rock to form? What makes up a rock? What makes what causes it to rain? You don't know the earth. You don't know the reality that you was born in, but you're going to sit around here and tell me you know about outside of this life, life after death. 
It makes no sense to me. Almost a year ago, somebody told me they can astral project out of their body. Well, I don't believe that. They told me they're going to astral project out their body into my dream. And they will say hi to me, greet me when I'm dreaming. It's been almost a year. Nobody from the spiritual world, astral project as, have visited me in my dreams. I'm not going to lie about it. If they did, I would tell you. I said I would say twin. Matter of fact, I I would I would tell twin pyramid and the deacons and Mello. I would tell them before I even make a video. Hey, somebody from YouTube, astral project. And talk to me in my in my dream. I would tell them first before I make a video about it. I wouldn't lie about it. I'm like, wow, that, that stuff is true. That stuff is real. Maybe they forgot their bus pass. Or maybe they couldn't astral project because because there was a, a, a COVID because of COVID or something. I, I don't know. They have yet to astral project in person or in my dream i have yet to see these folks <laughs> brothers back said that's right that ancestor stuff is to evoke religious indoctrination a absolutely we're, we're all not stupid but you have the right to be stupid but you do not have the right to force your stupidity and your beliefs that you really don't believe for real anyway on other folks. You want me to believe, you want the brother is back to believe, and twins, you want all of us to believe. So you don't feel stupid. That's what it's all about. Because you really don't believe yourself. I've never, I've never tried to force my beliefs on nobody. We come here and discuss what I have to bring to the rallies temple. I do not get angry at nobody because they reject what I have to say. That's your right. I don't get angry and upset. Talk about, well, if, if you don't believe Angel Snuff number seven, you're going to go to hell. There's a great punishment. I talk about the consequences of our actions, but I'm not sitting around here making no threat. If Angel Snuff number seven tell you to watch out for that car when you cross traffic, that's a reality. Then you get hit by the car. I wasn't trying to threaten you. I'm just telling you the reality. You go out there and you don't watch those cars. You can get hit by a car and you're going to die. That's not a threat. I'm telling you what's going to happen if you're not watching out for yourself. That's what we do here. It's not a threat. But it's mighty funny. It's mighty funny when these people get shot in the ass with a bullet or a stab or slapped, or punched in the face, they don't talk all this, well, death is an illusion, because chances are you are facing death, because people can kill you with their bare, bare hands. They don't, they don't need a knife or a gun. There are many people who have been killed by bare hands. <laughs> Twins, so let's teleport tonight. They took my uh, astral projection license away from me. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't astral project tonight. I got to go to the to the creator, uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the supreme being, the most high, and ask him to renew my uh, astral teleportation license. <laughs> the whole thing sounds... <laughs> Woo! We still waiting on... The great spiritual event. <laughs> Some of them. Shout out to Facebook. Shout out to Facebook people. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so it's 3.30 Central Time. The uh, great spiritual event could happen at any time. That's what we waiting on. The great spiritual event. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the thing about religion, 
is it makes us arrogant. It makes us self-righteous. It, it gives us a, a feeling of supremacy, not only over other human beings, but over all life on the planet. See, it don't make any sense. Just like the flat earth thing. What doesn't make sense to me about the flat earth thing, when you look at the planets and all this around, around us, everything is round. When you look at the sun, <laughs> when you look at the sun, it has a round shape. When you look at the moon, it's a round shape, a blonde shape, round circular. When you look at all these things are round, but for some reason, the earth is flat, like a penny, I guess. It doesn't make any sense. It could be true. But these people have not proved, proved it to be true. They so silly, they don't even make a Photoshop fake as a picture of a flat earth. I saw an experiment. This professor took his people out and they shot off a rocket. They bought a rocket and they put a camera on the rocket and shot the rocket into the air where it could, it could soar above the earth. The pictures came back. The earth was round. It was not flat. So why don't you do the same experiment and show us that your camera took pictures of a flat earth with your cheap ass. You're already throwing your money away on all these fake ass scholars and preachers and teachers. Why don't you invest Get y'all money together, you, you flat earth dumbass people. Get your money together, buy your rocket, put a camera, or, or y'all too dumb to do it. You too stupid to do that. I'm pretty sure you smart enough. Buy your rocket. They sell rockets. They, they have drones, but drones, I don't think drones can fly that high. But get you a rocket, put a camera on it, fly it into the sky, Show us your pictures of your flat earth in real time. I have yet to see not one, not one picture of a flat earth. Not one. Dumb stuff. So here are these religious and spiritual people because you was born a human being. You are greater. You are greater than the bear, greater than the ant, greater than the elephant, greater than the squirrel, greater than a blade of grass. You special. The elephant can die. The grass can die. The grasshopper can die. The moose can die. All life on this planet can die, but not you. You special. Now, why would God allow us the most destructive, violent life form on the planet? Why would God make it so that we don't die? We just turn into spirits so that we can go to the spiritual realm and be just as stupid in another realm as we are on the earth. That don't even make any sense to me. The elephants and the tigers and the birds and life on the planet they they are or have more of a right to see an afterlife than a human being. As screwed up as we are, you should be happy that we're dead and gone. Look, human beings have messed up the earth. Not the grasshoppers, not grass, not the sheep, not the cow. Human beings have caused this horrid condition that we're in. But we can't die. Oh, the, the body dies, but the but the flesh, we turn into a spirit and go cause hell in, in, in another spiritual realm. Because that's all you're going to do. You raise hell here, and then you're going to go to spiritual realm X and planet 7. You're nothing but hell raisers. Arrogant. 
conceited, self-righteous ass people. Think you all think you better. We always think somebody always think they better than somebody. This is why I love death. I love death because death gives you a reality check. Death kill you whether you young, old, black, white, rich, poor, educated, uneducated, don't give a damn. Death give you a reality check. One thing for sure, when your happy ass die, you're not going to come back here. So go to your spiritual realm or your planet X or whatever. We ain't going to see your ass again. That's for sure. Now, I could be wrong. While we talking, a ghost or a goblin might come in the room and call me a lie. Here I am. I very much doubt it. We still waiting on the great spiritual event. A lot of these people said these spiritual folks and these prophet folks, they said that uh, Donald Trump was going to still be president. Is Donald Trump president? A lot of these things we can guess on our own. It's like gambling. We can guess on our own. It has nothing to do with you being prophetic or whatever. It's just making a guess. I can prophesize I would die in a car accident. And then y'all be saying, ooh, and then I die in a car accident. You guys will say, wow, Angel did say he's probably was going to die in a car accident. The probability is there. Because I drive cars and I walk and I associate myself with cars. So there's a probability I can get hit by a car, die in a car accident, because the probability is there. Has nothing to do with being some great prophet or, or whatever. It's just common sense. This stuff makes us so arrogant. I'm better. I'm greater. You really messed up. I can't die. Well, again, we won't see your happy ass again. So you might as well be dead. <laughs> That's for sure. Like Twin Pyramids said, facts. Facts, baby. Now, my next point is this. Talking about this spiritual being, this creator, this uh, most high, this God person alien, whatever they want to, whatever it is. <clears throat> I was just thinking to myself, this God, Allah, or whatever it is, the most high, the creator, this being sounds like the Godfather. And if you notice, they do use the word God in this title, the Godfather. The Godfather is the person who is who is the main uh, head of, 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 of a criminal uh, organization. The Godfather. Many of you have seen this movie called The Godfather. I actually, I really, I really like that movie, The Godfather. Marlon Brando did an excellent excellent job the godfather if you if you have not seen the godfather check it out and uh godfather number two that was cool godfather godfather number three please avoid it's like three hours long boring as hell <laughs> it was godfather three was three hours long and boring as hell and it was not exciting at all I, 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 I would advise leave that one alone. But Godfather 1 and 2, that, that was cool. But it gives you an insight into the, uh, the lifestyle of criminal organization. The Godfather. When you join criminal gangs or these mafias or whatever, a lot of times they require 
They require you to prove your loyalty to them. They might ask you to go steal something for them, go kill somebody for them, to prove that you are loyal to them. You have to do that. And I'm like, that's what this God in the Bible and the Quran has the same mindset, like a godfather. Remember the story of Abraham? What was his son name? I forgot what his, what his son name. Uh, Isaac. I believe that's what his name is. Abraham and Isaac. And God wanted Abraham to prove his loyalty to the creator. God going to tell Abraham, take your son up on the altar and sacrifice his life for my name's sake. To prove, basically you proving your loyalty to the Godfather. And Abraham is like, what? This is my son. But I, I'm, the, I'm the creator. I created you and your son. Now take your ass up on the altar and slice your son's throat, Abraham. Prove your Lord. Man, this, you telling, okay, you telling me that this God, the most high, Yahweh, whatever this God name is, Allah, this person, this being, is not acting like, like, the, like the Godfather, like part of a criminal organization, the mafia. And so Abraham takes Isaac, and Isaac is brainwashed. Basically, Isaac is like, if that's what God wants us to do, Daddy, okay, I'm, we got to prove our loyalty to, to God. I'm going to go up here and slice your throat, son. And so I guess Isaac said, well, Daddy, if you got to do that, slice it right here. It probably won't hurt so bad. Just slice, slice it right here. Do it, you know, do it humanely. I got it, son. We, we know how to kill sheep around here. You know, it was sheep herders and stuff. They know how to slaughter animals. So I so Isaac is going to take his son up on the altar. And according to the story, now correct me, I, I have been, I've been away from a lot of these teachings for a long time. But right before Abraham could slice his son's throat, God is like, okay. Yeah. I wish I could do that little jaw thing, you know. That's all right. No, that's all right. That's all right. Don't do that, Abraham. You are good with me. You prove that you're loyal to me. That's a mafia move. But then you're going to tell me that this is the God of love and peace. What God of love and peace and what kind of love and peace do you represent where you're going to ask somebody to go slice your son or your daughter or your wife's throat? What kind of love and peace is that? Well, you see, I ain't just not not seven. You want to prove your loyalty to me. I want you to take that twin pyramid. Take him up on the altar. I want you to slice your throat. Slice his throat. Make him a real twin. <laughs> Make him a real twin. Show that you're loyal to the creator, the most high. Yahshua, Yeshiri, Allah. What kind of being would ask you to do something like that? You would expect that in a criminal organization. You would expect that in a criminal organization. But if God is of love and God knows how much you love your son and your daughter or your dog Spot, why would this loving, peaceful God ask you to do something like that? That's some gang. That's a gangster move. That's criminal activity. There's nothing holy and righteous about that type of behavior. So if you want to be part of the reality's temple on earth, I'm gonna send you out to rob a bank. I'm gonna send you out to murder somebody. Show me that you're loyal. That's criminal activity. That's wicked activity. 
How many times did Satan, Lucifer, the devil, how many times did, did, the, did the devil, the devil, to my knowledge, only asked, will you give me your soul? He did not ask you, go kill your mama, kill your daddy, slice your, your son's throat. He just say, give me your soul. God wants your soul, kill your mama, your daddy, and your dog spot. And he's the good guy. This supreme being creator person, that's the good guy. <laughs> but the bad guy, Lucifer, Mr. Devil, he don't ask y'all, he don't ask us to do all that. Give me your soul. Nobody else is involved. Your mama don't have nothing to do with this. Your daddy, your dog spot don't have nothing to do with this. Give me your soul. But the devil is the bad guy. Another example. <clears throat> who was that? Who was that fella? Was it Job? Job in the in the belly of, a, of the whale. That story. Remember that story. Now remember, Job was living the good life. I think Job was a prominent businessman. Had a wife. I mean, he living good. And he, and he worshiped God. Job was doing good. That wasn't enough for the Godfather. <laughs> that wasn't enough. That wasn't good enough for the Godfather. Because him and the because according to the story, I believe the devil said, "Oh, Job ain't he ain't he ain't loyal like that." So God told the devil, "I'm going to show you." That that Joe rode with me. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take all this comfort away from him. I hope I got the right story. I hope I'm telling the story right. I'm, I might be confused, but I believe it was Joe Joe the one that got caught up in the belly of the of the well. God took everything away from him, and he ended up he ended up suffering. And And the devil told him that Job would curse God. So God, the Godfather, decided to test Job. Are you gonna you going through all this suffering? Are you going to are you gonna curse God? And Job took it. He just suffered. And he just suffered and suffered. I refuse to give up on God. I refuse. That sounds like some gangster stuff to me. <laughs> I could be wrong. That sounds like some straight up Godfather moves. What you think, Facebook? Facebook, what you think? <laughs> what you think? Terry, what you think? That sounds like some straight up gangster stuff, mafia stuff. To me, you don't take everything away from this man. Show Lord it to me. Exactly. Terry says, Joan in the well, and Joe was the one who suffered. And plus, it's a dumbass story for real anyway, because even though a whale is big, a human being cannot live inside of a of a whale. <laughs> That's a dumb story. And you know, when when you don't think, when you don't think, you just take that stuff on face value. Or apparently, you don't know nothing about a whale. You cannot live inside a whale. Okay, y'all. Okay, let's let's get that straight. <laughs> dumb, dumb story. <laughs> Human beings can't live inside no way. We believe all this dumbass stuff. We don't think at all. I remember I used to I used to talk this story and never paid no attention. And I love animal stories. I know dang well a human being, a human being cannot live in a, inside of a whale. Even though a whale is really, really big or whatever, you and me, we cannot live inside inside a whale <laughs> oh dumb dumb story 
But I mean, but this this God sounds like a mafia, a mafia boss. And this God is peaceful and loving. I can imagine, and you know, Elijah Muhammad was a mafia boss, really. And you don't have to say kill nobody. See, a lot of people think, just like Minister Farrakhan, a lot of these people don't actually have to say, I want you to go knock off so-and-so. They don't have to say it. The believers, those who are listening to them, automatically know the message. So Elijah Muhammad did not have to give a direct order to kill Malcolm X. He didn't have to do it. He just had to sit back in his chair and tell the people, and yeah, well, you know that uh, this Malcolm is uh, messing with our money and uh, he, he's causing us uh, problems. We need to uh, have him uh, disappear uh, so that we can go back to teach the people so they would know Allah is God and God want me to have more women. So <laughs> Next thing you know, Malcolm dead. <laughs> Woo, I'm so happy to, to get away from from religion it makes makes people <laughs> oh it makes us crazy it is <laughs> Woo. oh man oh wow but uh <clears throat> so i can see why the devil lucifer satan I see why he had a problem with God. Because God is crazy. The most high, the creator, this alien, he's out of his mind. He's the problem. I mean, think about it. Who's really the one that have caused problems on the planet? The believers in God or the people who worship the devil? Now, the people that worship the devil, some of them do crazy stuff. They believe in human sacrifice or whatever. But these people that believe in Jesus, Allah, and these, these, these major religions, they drop bombs on people. They kill children. They kill women. They kill animals. They don't give a damn. They just murderers, destructive. You don't see all that from the people that talk about, I worship the devil. It, I just, it just makes me think. It just made me think about this, this stuff. And then, I'm going to say this in my conclusion. Hey, look, I'm going to say this in my conclusion. God plays favorites. What uh, God, God is the uh, the Jews are the chosen people of God. No, it's the black man. The black people are the chosen people of God. No, uh, the uh, no the uh, Chinese are the chosen people of God. I thought that all of us supposed to be children of the Most High. I thought all of us are supposed to be the children of God. I, I, that's what I was told. So how did the Jews become the chosen people of God? How did the black people become the chosen people of God or whoever? That's favoritism. And what did God choose them to do? Why, why is the Jews the chosen people? Why are the black people? What, what are you chose to do? Chosen people of God. That's my favorite. These are my favorite people. What did you choose? What did you choose to do? What did you choose these people to do? They your favorites. And apparently, whatever it is, 
they the only ones that can do it, whatever it is. We need to think about these things. I say, accept reality is much easier. Learn how to think for yourself. Accept things for what they are. Change the things you can and just learn how to deal with the things that you cannot change. Don't worry about a spiritual realm. You're going to find there and get there sooner or later if it is one. You don't have to worry about all that. Learn how to live life. Learn how to deal in life. I don't care about a spiritual realm. I would deal with the spiritual realm when I become a spirit and have no choice but to deal with it. Just like we didn't know what life was. You didn't know nothing about all this. We was born into this and we had to learn how to deal with it. So if there's anything after life, don't do the same thing. Learn how to deal with it. But I'm not going to make up lies and fairy tales and stories like I know. And you know damn well you don't know. Keep passing on these lies, this salt water down to children and babies and they keep passing these this bull doo doo on and on and on. It's time for it to come to an end so that you can start fresh. So you can start having respect for other life on this planet and the planet itself. Mm. That's what we are about here. How many channels, so-called pro-blackity black channels, how many of them recognize or give honor to the earth? Well, I give, I give honor to the ancestors. If it was not for the earth, you wouldn't have no ancestors. Where the hell do you think they come from? They come from up out of the earth, like all life. But they give no honor and respect the earth. They just want to rape the earth, pillage the earth, like all these other parasites on the planet. Caught up in material gain. I just gave respect and celebration for International Women's Day. Shout out to all the women, the females on this planet, human being. And we just gave tribute and celebration to Earth Day. Shout out and honor to this planet because without this planet, we wouldn't exist, we wouldn't even be here. Women should not be mistreated and exploited, nor should this planet. And that's why she's called Mother Earth, because she's life-giving like women. And as men, as males, it should be our job to protect woman, to protect life, to protect this planet. Man has become corrupt. And so my self-appointed mission, I say self-appointed mission, is to bring man back to himself. Because man, a corrupt man did this. Men who are not corrupt, men who come back to their manhood, we can straighten all this out before it's too late. But like all things, time waits for no one. And like all things, sometimes it gets to the point of no return. And we have to suffer the consequences of our actions. So be it. So be it. I want to thank you for joining me this afternoon. I, I really enjoyed the talk. Much better than two 15-minute videos. That was the original plan, two, two 15 minutes, minute videos I was going to do on this topic. But like I said, somebody on Facebook told me 
that at 3.30, a great spiritual event was going to happen. And so far, I'm looking at the chat room uh, on, on YouTube. There's no reports of nothing out of the ordinary on the internet, on TV somewhere. And I'm not getting any reports on Facebook. Let me check out Facebook real quick. There's no reports of anything going on from Facebook out there, this, this spiritual event. So I guess we have to wait till um, 3.30 p.m. Uh, California time. That's Pacific time, I believe. And look, we're just going to wait until midnight and see. Maybe they didn't catch the bus. Maybe, they, maybe God didn't have a bus pass or something. I don't know. He got on the wrong flight. When the spaceship was going by Jupiter, he, he missed his, his flight to, to come to the Earth. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to ask this person, what happened? Uh, God got sick or something? I, I don't know. I was, Actually, I was looking forward. I'm, I was looking forward to the great spiritual event. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all of us was. I wanted, I wanted it to happen while we are alive. That would re really be cool. I would like that myself. Woo, the, the great spiritual event is happening. And we're live. Another disappointment. Another disappointment. But for me, but for me, it's expected. Nothing but a bunch of talk. And these things never, they never happen. Never. It makes you feel good, makes you feel smart. But then you look dumb because nothing happened. That's why the smart people always talk about, oh, no, no man knows the hour. They'll tell you that real quick. No, no man knows the hour. Cause nothing's gonna happen. You're gonna be dead and God uh gone, riding in the grave. No man knows the hour. We don't feel stupid. We don't feel dumb. Like Malcolm X said, we have been hoodwinked. We have been bamboozled. The whole human family for centuries. I don't know when this religion and spirituality stuff got started, but they, they did a, a hell of a job on us. But this is 2022, the new age of information it makes no sense for us to continue these outdated belief systems. Thousands of years should show us it's garbage. But we want to keep believing in Barney the dinosaur because Barney the dinosaur makes us happy. How are you going to feel when the day finally comes to show you once and for all Barney don't exist? It's not going to hurt us. We already know. We're trying to tell you so you don't waste your time. So you can go on to do, do adult things. To become an adult. As the Bible say, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. But when I become an adult, when I mature, I have to put away childish things. And that's what we have done here. At the reality's temple on earth, and that's why you don't really understand where we're coming from because we have put away childish things. Except reality, my friend, is much easier. On that note, thank you, Facebook, thank you, YouTube, those in the chat room, the Deacons, brothers back in the chat room, and and maybe somebody I did not see. Uh, my Facebook family, I thank you so much for joining us. On this special edition of the Reality's Temple, we were waiting on the great spiritual event. And during this broadcast, it just did not happen. Maybe it will happen after we uh, go off the air. I am looking forward to finally, after thousands of years, I am looking forward to finally 
meeting and see with my own eyes this supreme creator being uh, Allah, Jesus, whatever alien it is. I'm looking forward to that myself. I don't know about you. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm looking forward to it. So on that note, jot down your comments. Like, subscribe, share, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, check out the description box. If you want to donate to this platform to show your appreciation for what we bring to uh, this media, you can do that. The information is uh, in the description box. My autobiography, if you want to check that out, the information is in the description box. Subscribe to uh, our Deacons of Reality on YouTube, Deacons of Reality YouTube channel. And of course, check out our Operation Exodus Mississippi Facebook page and like that page there and learn more about that. Matter of fact, I'm planning on, God willing, to have a special uh, Operation Exodus Mississippi uh, live stream just talking about the Mississippi campaign. And we want to want to continue to push that vision. And uh, I, I think that's it. That's it for now. Oh, check us out on Rumble. Sometimes, a lot of times I put videos on my Rumble channel that I do not put on YouTube. So if you want to keep up with that, because there's some things I know I will be flagged for or people don't like, I will put that on, on Rumble. I will not put that on um, YouTube. I might put it on my Facebook page. My Facebook page, Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry Facebook page, you can also like and follow that page. Uh, if there are any questions or comments, we can do that before we get out of here. Anybody out there that want to join us real quick? Because I got the time. I got the time. Anybody want to join us real quick? I put the uh, link in the uh, chat room. I have a few minutes. We can, you want to bring a comment or just to come on here and say hi. Assalamu alaikum, Habar, Ghani, all that kind of good stuff. I put that, I put that link in Facebook too. Thank you, Terry. Anybody want to come just to say hi real quick? We have a question or comment before we get out of here, because I really would like to be live when the great spirit, <laughs> when the great spiritual event happened, I, I would like to be live. I, that would re that would be really, really cool. Don't you think so? While we live, like, wow, this is really happening. Can't get no more real than this. Any more questions or comments? You can even write your comment on it. I can go ahead and put your comment up on the board before we get out of here. Comments and questions. I hope that I don't want you to agree with everything that I say. I just want to put something out here to make us think. There is no right or wrong. I just want to put something out here to make us think. Use our brain. We're not here to convert nobody or change your mind to anything. But we would like for you to learn how to think for yourself. Stop talking about, oh, the Quran says this and Minister Farrakhan said. No, what do you say? How do you think? The Realities Tip on Earth ministry, everything that we bring here is from our mind, how we think. It's about us. So you won't hear me do all this quoting. I don't need the Bible and the Quran to think. I don't need the Bible and the Quran or Minister Farrakhan or T.D. Jakes or no preachers. We don't need preachers, including myself. The people in the chat room, those who listen to Angel Snow No. 7, they don't need me to do their thinking for them. The only thing I do 
is express an observation or a conclusion they already was thinking about and I am the voice for that. I'm not doing, I'm not thinking for nobody. So I want to thank Terry and those who are listening on Facebook, the chat room here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, if the great spiritual awakening does happen, I will, I will come back live. I want to cover that. I want to cover that. I want to talk about that live. That would be some amazing stuff. No doubt. So on that note, let's get out of here. And as Don Cornelius used to always say, as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and so, 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 so. we are already 5,000. Y'all stay peaceful, y'all. Huh?